What's going on everybody, it's Carmine from Barmine Tech, and today we're going to be continuing on with the Proxmox series. We're going to be talking about the Proxmox Firewall. This was something that was requested in some of the comments, so I figured why not work on a video for this. So there is a few steps to the Proxmox Firewall, which we're going to be covering today, and I'm going to actually show you some of the stuff we're going to be able to do in the Firewall right now, so you have an idea of what we're going to be covering in this video. So I'm going to go over into Big Lab, and I'm going to show you what we're working on today. So you can see we're over here in the data center for Big Lab, and I'm over here in the Firewall tab. You can see that I started putting some firewall rules in place to accept and drop traffic. And we're going to be talking about the different options for this, how to set it up. But you can see over here that I made some simple firewall rules to just block some traffic from a couple of my work machines. And this is what we're going to be working on today. So I'm going to go through the steps of how to set up the firewall, the different options for setting up the firewall, and the different possibilities at the different levels, such as at the cluster level, the node level and at the actual machine level. So this is where we're going to go over today. So let's get right into it. All right. So like I was mentioning before, there is a firewall at different levels in Proxmox. So over here, we're at the data center level. And if I scroll down to the firewall, we have a firewall at this level of the Proxmox environment. If I click on my node, I can come over here and I can come to firewall again. And I have another firewall to work on. And let's say I come over here to this VM that I made, firewall demo. You can see that I have another firewall that I can configure. So this is all for different purposes. So the idea of the data center firewall is that if you are in a cluster, so if you have multiple Proxmox nodes, this level of the firewall will control all the traffic flowing from outside the Proxmox cluster into the Proxmox cluster. The rules are going to go across all the nodes and it's going to control the flow of traffic to everything. Let's say I have multiple nodes, but I only need certain rules for certain nodes. So let's say I have one node that I need to allow HTTPS traffic on, but the other ones I don't. I could do that at a node basis off of the one firewall or whatever it might be. If I need to permit or I need to deny certain traffic off of one node, we could do that here at the node level. Now a step further, let's say I need to do certain firewall rules at the virtual machine level. I do that over here at the virtual machine level and not impact anything else. And this is going to be the same for all the other options. So if you are in a cluster and you apply firewall rules at the node level, it's not going to impact the other nodes, but it is going to impact all the virtual machines on the node. If I do it at the cluster level, it's going to do it to everything. It's going to impact all the nodes and all the virtual machines. So just keep that in mind when you're making your firewall rules of where you're making them and how it might impact everything else inside that environment. Today, we are going to talk about making firewall rules at the different levels, and we're going to go over some of the possible rules you can make. And of course, you could take them a step further and make them for whatever you might need. So we're going to start off at the data center and you can see that I already started to make a couple rules and this was just for some testing that I was doing. So we're going to work at the data center level, like I was saying, and some things to keep in mind about working with the firewall is that it's top down for the rule set. So the rules at the top of the firewall are going to take precedence over the rules at the bottom of the policy. So anything that's going to be at top is going to be the first rules to hit. And if the traffic doesn't match anything specified in the rule, as you can continue to drop down, that's what it's going to try to match. If it doesn't match anything and the firewall is enabled, it's going to have an implicit deny and then it's just going to block everything for the most part. If you are on the firewall tab and you click help, they do have documentation that's covering over all the firewall and you could read more into it if you're interested. One thing to keep in mind before we enable the firewall is if we enable the firewall and we don't have a rule to allow our access into the Proxmox host, we're going to lose connection and then we're going to have to go back over to the machine and, and close out the firewall so we can get access again. So before we even touch anything, I'm going to recommend that we come over to add. It's going to be in and then it's going to be whatever your management interface is going to be. So for me, it's going to be VMBR zero. Most likely it's going to be yours too, but if you change it, you'll know. We're going to come to TCP and the destination port for Proxmox is going to be the web portal, which is 8006. We want to enable this rule. And if we want to specify from a certain host, we could do that here. If you want to let everything in, we could just leave it like that. And I'm going to click add. So what this rule is going to do is it's going to allow us access into the web portal, 
even if we apply some other rule that might end up blocking us. So when we do turn the firewall on, at least we won't lose access and have to go onto the physical machine again to get back into the web console or SSH or anything else. So now that we have this rule in place, what we're gonna do is come over to the options underneath firewall and mine's already enabled, but yours will say no. And then you could just check this box off and now it's gonna turn the firewall on. Now, before you turn the firewall on, please make sure that you have this rule to allow you at least over 8006 in, or you're not going to be able to get into the web portal anymore. And you're going to have to go into the physical box and have to turn off the firewall, and then you get access again and redo all of this. But I'm going to show you some of the other things that we could do in the firewall. So if you notice over here, we have aliases. What aliases are going to be, they're going to be objects or elements that we could use in the firewall. And this is very commonly used on firewalls and other networking devices that we could pretty much just name what IPs are that are going to be seen in the network. So if you notice over here, I have win11vm. This should be an IP address, but if we come back, I made a element for my Windows 11 VM that I use. So we can just click add and let's say I want to do my router. I could do 192.168.51 slash 32. I have the IP address of my router and then slash 32 is a subnet mask that's only going to give it the one address out of that range. If you want to allow a whole network, we could do that too. You could do home. I don't think I could do spaces. I can. So I could do home network. I could do 192. 168.50.0 slash 24. This is going to allow my whole home network into Proxmox and I can click add. Yeah, I need to, it can't be a space. Let's see if it'll like a hyphen. There we go. So you can put a hyphen in. So I, I could do home network and now I have an element to allow my whole network into it. So now let's go over making some additional rules. So I'm going to go back over here to the firewall. And like I said, you could see I already put some rules in place and we're going to work on some more. So now to work on doing some rules, we could do something like limiting SSH access to the node. So I can come up here to add. I could do the direction in. So the direction is going to be the flow of the traffic to the node. So we could either do in, out, or forward. In would be from the outside into the node. Out would be from inside the node or the cluster outside. Our next option is going to be the action of what we want to do. I want to actually reject this traffic because we're going to show how to block SSH. The interface is going to be VMBR0. Over here they have some macros and if I come over and start typing SSH, there's one for here instead of having to type it out manually. And then I'm going to block it off my workstation. I'm going to enable this rule. I'm going to click add. And you can see now it applied to block SSH for my workstation. So we made this rule over here to block SSH. And if I come over to PuTTY and I try to SSH into my actual node, you can see it's dot four. You can see that I get a network error connection refused and that's because we're blocking the traffic. So I'll just minimize this really quick. I'm gonna actually change this back from TCP and I'm going to use the macro for SSH. We're going to accept the traffic now, and if I click OK, it takes a couple seconds for it to load in, but we should be good, and if I click Restart, I should be able to connect, and you can see now I can connect. I have access to my node over here. This is the, the Proxmox server. You can see here's Big Lab. So we can close that out and pretty much you can make rules at the cluster level or the data center level for whatever you might need. And just keep in mind as you make these rules, if you have multiple nodes in the cluster, it's going to impact all of them as well as the virtual machines below it. The next step we could do is we can come over here and we can work off the actual node. So I can come to firewall here and same thing, we can enable the firewall at this level too. So if I want to maybe limit certain connections to the node here, I could do it as well. So we're going to block ping so I can reject it. On the interface, it's going to be VMBR0. I'm going to do ICMP as the protocol. I'm going to enable this rule. And from my source, I'm going to block it from my workstation, which is the computer we're working off of right now. Other than that, we should be all good. I'm going to click add. And if I open up a terminal, I shouldn't be able to ping the host, which you can see I'm getting a connection timed out. 
and that's because of this rule that we just wrote so maybe you want to limit what can reach to check if your hosts are alive across the network maybe you run something like uptime kuma and you only want uptime kuma to be able to ping and maybe a workstation and other than that you want everything else to not be able to you could set rules in the firewall just like this now maybe i do want it to be able to ping so i could just change this over to accept i'm gonna click ok and then in a second or two, this should start to be able to reach the server and it's gonna get responses. So we'll give this a second and we'll see if we start getting some responses. And here we go, we can see that we're getting some responses from the server now because I adjusted that rule to accept ICMP traffic. Similarly to at the, the data center level or the cluster level, I can make whatever rules I might need. You can see I still have my aliases, so at the cluster level, I can make whatever kind of elements or objects to use and make making these rules a lot easier. So the only place that the firewall gets a little different is gonna be at the virtual machine level, and that's just because of how the networking is labeled. So if you come over to add, we still have the same interface, except over here, it doesn't use a VMBR0 or VMBR1, whatever you might use. If you come over to your hardware, if we come over to the network device, you can see we have net zero. So being that this NIC that's on the virtual machine is attached to this bridge, this is the network we're gonna use. We're no longer gonna use VMBR0. I'm gonna show you this in a minute when we make a rule, but I just wanted to go over it because I was a little confused about it at first too. So now I'm gonna come over to the firewall and I wanna add a rule to limit traffic to this host. So I'm gonna do another block SSH. And again, we have that macro, so I don't need to type out the TCP and port 22. I want to block it from my workstation and I want to enable this rule. I'm going to click add. I'm going to ensure the firewall is enabled and it is. And I'm going to turn on this virtual machine and then we'll be right back. So I turned on the virtual machine. I'm just going to grab the IP address this really quick because I don't remember it. So we can see over here that it's dot 132. I made a rule to block SSH. So if I open up putty, You can see that I'm going to get another network connection refused. And this is because at the virtual machine level, we put a firewall rule to block SSH. Similarly to before, if I click accept now, I'll give it a couple seconds to apply. If I come back to putty and I restart the session, I should be able to connect. It, it might take a couple tries just because of the rule applying. And now over here, you can see I'm able to log in again and I have access to my virtual machine. Same as the other points, you can come over here and you can make whatever rule you might want. So we do have all the different kind of network protocols. If you're interested in really deep diving into them, most commonly you're just gonna be working with TCP or UDP, but they do have everything else. They also have macros like I was mentioning. So if you do need to permit or deny certain traffic, you can. And this does make it a lot easier sometimes when it comes to making firewall rules. A lot of actual firewall vendors, they do put these elements in here for what we call services or the network services for stuff like exactly what it says, SMB, SMTP, there was HTTP, HTTPS up there, you have Telnet, so you could do stuff like that to in just to make it easier, you don't need to memorize the ports of what you're trying to work with. But this is how we can make firewall rules at the different levels of a Proxmox environment, whether it's at the virtual machine, the node, or the data center level. Just one thing I want to mention is that you might still have a physical firewall you run, or maybe you run something like OpenSense or PFSense, you have a FortiGate, you have a Cisco ASA, maybe a Sonicle, I don't know. That's still your first piece of edge protection or your gateway firewall. Make sure that's configured properly. Don't rely on the Proxmox firewall to keep your network secure. It's only gonna work with what's inside your Proxmox environment. So I still would really recommend ensuring that you have some sort of firewall on the outside of your network or right on the edge to ensure protection or security. I wanna thank you all for watching. If you did like this video, if you could drop a like down below and make sure you're subscribed to the channel, it really helps us out. As always, I'll have links to all the gear in my home lab down below if you wanna check any of it out. I'll have a link to the Discord server if you wanna join up. And we're always chatting in the Discord about different projects or news that comes up or anything really relevant to IT. Other than that, I wanna thank you all for watching. And as my buddy Don would say, hack till it hurts.